So what are the three cheapest GPU clouds out there for generative AI for the enterprise? Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, where we learn about generative AI and its application within the enterprise. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, b Geek, and analyst with Cube Research. Let's get started. So the idea for, for this show came about with a few questions that I got uh, from you guys uh, in terms of, uh, you know, where to run your generative AI uh, applications, your net new applications that everybody's looking to uh, drive these days. And then looking at the public cloud providers out there, the major ones, and getting a bit of sticker shock uh, in terms of what they're charging for GPU usage uh, and uh, storage hosting out on those particular platforms. And they ask the right question. In other words, are there less expensive solutions that they can look at? They're going to provide a better cost advantage for running their generative AI systems in the cloud. Uh, for some, sometimes on-prem solutions are not going to be an option. You want to run them in the cloud, but uh, it's pretty expensive out there. So in choosing the right GPU cloud provider, um, for AI, generative AI, deep learning projects, no matter what, it does not matter if you're a researcher, startup, large enterprise, small enterprise, the cost of doing this stuff out there is prohibitive. Uh, and of course, we talked about on this show how in many instances, businesses probably shouldn't be building these big honking uh, LLMs out there using generative AI tools and technology but use more tactical deployments of AI, small language models, agentic-based deployments, things like that. But sometimes you can't avoid needing GPU-based systems out there. It's obviously easier to leverage them as a service you know, out of a particular cloud provider than to run them uh, on-prem and have to deal with the cost associated with that, the power, people around to maintain it, things like that. So the natural question is, what's the most cost-effective way if you're taking that path. And it's not always going to be the big three cloud providers, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. So when looking at GPUs that are delivered on demand as a cloud service, you know, versus running them on premise, we need to consider that aspect or those options uh, before we commit uh, to running GPUs and GPUs in the cloud. And there's a few attributes that we need to consider. First and foremost would be cost efficiency. So the upfront cost cloud services eliminate the need for sig significant initial investment in hardware. Uh, we don't have to own a data center space. We don't have to buy servers. Uh, so it's going to be a uh, easier path to do something in the cloud than it is to do something on prem. And the operational costs are pretty high of avoiding the expenses of electricity, cooling, maintenance associated with that. Scalability is another aspect to consider. On-demand resources, they provide flexibility and the ability to scale since it's other people's resources and they have many servers uh, on demand that they're willing to sell you. The more servers you use, the more money they make. Scalability typically shouldn't be a problem. It's not unlimited, by the way. They always say unlimited scalability in the cloud. There is an upward limitation of that, but normally it's not something you're going to hit. So if you have a spike in demand, so in other words, we need to uh, train a uh, um, uh, train a large language model fairly quickly. Uh, we need to add additional GPUs to train it faster. We need to drive different inference engines. For example, your, your retailer and you're looking for personalization using generative AI around your uh, selling applications, you have the capacity to do it. So in other words, we don't have to you know, buy uh, hardware, have it sitting on the loading dock, bring it into the data center, install it, test it, burn it in, uh, and get it up and running. We just press a button and it allocates the GPUs for us. Uh, another advantage would be access to latest technology. Cloud providers typically upgrade their offerings around the latest and greatest stuff. And they do so because they want you to use their technology. The more you use, the more they get paid. So you don't necessarily need to upgrade your physical assets as part of that. And leveraging GPUs on demand provides you with that advantage. And by the way, this is for all clouds as well, not just the uh, discounted uh, uh, GPU clouds we're going to talk about in the show. And so the providers offer optimized environments, pre-installed AI, deep learning frameworks, uh, the ability to provide an ecosystem for you to build and deploy and operate AI systems. And so they're going to support that because, again, they want you to build your applications, build your AI systems, host your AI systems on their particular platforms, and that's how they make money. Uh, global access and collaboration. 
Uh, cloud services provide the ability to access high-performance computing resources, again, from anywhere in the world. Now, I'm going to caveat this with sometimes uh, some of the larger public cloud providers are going to have an international reach, in other words, points of presence in uh, most of the major countries out there near, near most of the major cities. Uh, some of the discount GPU systems may not be uh, as available. So in other words, they may uh, support a uh, particular region like the United States or Europe uh, in a much more greater way than they do the rest of the world. And then finally, reduction in maintenance burden. We don't have to deal with, since we don't have to maintain our own hardware and software, and this is basically the value proposition of most public cloud providers. They handle the hardware upkeep, you know, software updates, uh, security patches, all that stuff is pushed off on somebody else. In other words, we're outsourcing the operations of the system in terms of dealing with the infrastructure stuff. Uh, the ability to uh, put these patches and fixes in, upgrade to the latest networking uh, solutions, things like that, that's on them, it's not on you. And uh, you know, even though it's not a perfect system, a lot of the cloud providers out there sometimes may screw that up. It's typically cheaper and easier than if you're maintaining it yourself. And then finally, security and compliance. Data protection, many providers adhere to industry standards and certifications. So if you're supporting something like HIPAA, uh, you're supporting uh, you know, European data, uh, data privacy standards, things like that, they kind of know how to do it. So that's not on you. It's on them to provide some of the core capabilities. Now, you have a shared responsibility model. So in other words, you need to uh, build those things into your system using their tools. Um, but it's going to provide you with easier access uh, to those kinds of systems than it would if you're you know, DIYing it on premise, on premises, excuse me. So in looking at uh, the cost effective GPU cloud providers out there that are suitable for AI system building and operations for uh, traditional enterprises, and again, you know, internationally focused, these are uh, systems that are going to be accessible from pretty much anywhere in the planet. I'm sure there's some limitations there, uh, but they should be. Um, we looked at three, or I looked at three, uh, what I consider very cost-effective solutions that I think probably most people aren't considering. Uh, some of these, uh, in my research, I found them out and understood they were there for the first time. Even though there's dozens of GPU cloud providers out there, and there's certainly the big cloud providers, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon Web Services, uh, they're worth a the consideration based on the fact that they're able to provide GPUs at a greatly discounted rate versus what the larger cloud providers are able to do. So first is going to be Vast AI, V-I-S-T dot AI. Uh, you'll find that a lot of these are something dot AI. And they operate in a unique model by connecting users with underutilized GPUs across the globe, which is kind of cool. This approach often results in cost saving by enabling users to choose among competitive price for various sources. So what they're doing here, which is I think is unique, is that they're buying capacity from people that are able to provide capacity, and they're reselling that capacity to you. So in other words, something that would normally just sitting running in a data center not doing something, but still absorbing power, uh, we can put to use, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, they're focused on AI. They operate specifically for deep learning applications, and they're going to provide high-performance workstations, cloud computing resources, and this stuff is going to be tailored specifically for the AI projects. So users are able to using this uh, cloud to customize their GPU selections based on individual project needs, budgets, allowing for cost controls, and others are able to put uh, cost governance around these systems. And the cost advantage would be that due to the centralized nature and wide variety of hardware, again, they're reselling other people's stuff, which I think is, is kind of neat as long as we're dealing with the security aspects of that. Vast AI often provides um, more economical options compared to traditional cloud service providers. So this is an option out there, and it's kind of a cool option because it certainly is a sustainable option. The fact we're using excess capacity and they're reselling excess capacity to us, and we're leveraging it over the open internet, again, as a service. Some of the concerns that I would have would be uh, performance uh, of networking, because, again, we're reaching into different places where the GPUs reside. You know, what's the network bandwidth into those places? Uh, are we able to get the performance, the network performance that we need? Security, of course, because we're running on another, somebody else's hardware. It's not just a cloud provider, but somebody else's physical infrastructure, which is kind of weird into itself, but I can see how you could pull it off. Next would be uh, Lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A, uh, GPU cloud. And they provide... Um, 
a platform that comes with pre-installed uh, deep learning frameworks, uh, such as TensorFlow and PyTorch, common uh, AI tool sets. You can even build generative AI systems with those as well. Uh, and they allow to, this to facilitate the ease of a setup process, reducing time to deployment. So very much like the value proposition of the larger cloud providers, where they're providing you with an AI ecosystem where you're able to build, deploy, and operate these AI systems, they're providing a similar value proposi proposition here, but again, at a lower cost. Um, their pricing is going to be more cost effective than the big providers. They provide low pricing models starting around a uh, buck 25 an hour for a single RTX 6000 GPU instance. Lambda GPU cloud is designed to fit the budgets of research development teams and really kind of they're focused on that. So they're aimed for enterprises that are just looking at the GPU assets that this cloud is able to provide. So again, focused on building AI systems, generative AI, deep learning, uh, agentic AI systems, things like that. So you're able to scale from a single machine to multiple VMs. Again, and it, this is infrastructure I think I believe that they own. And they're able to provide you with a scalability because they're able to allocate additional GPU server instances as you need them, uh, providing storage instances as well. Uh, they're able to include CUDA drivers, uh, which is the NVIDIA stuff, expedite deep learning workflows. So in other words, they, they're catering specifically for the AI developer and deployment out there. And they're providing as much of the tooling that you need to create an ecosystem to build and deploy and uh, create these systems. Next would be Genesis Cloud. Uh, and... Their big claim to fame is environmental uh, sustainability. The service is known for its sustainable operation. It uses 100% renewable energy uh, from um, geothermal sources. So if you're uh, into the green movement and you want to use green ops and you're trying to use something that's going to have a much more sustainable power source, if you're considering that, and some enterprises are, certainly people that are looking to enhance their ESG score, they are able to provide that. So... Uh, if you're conscious about carbon footprint uh, and also looking for a discounted GPU provider, uh, this may be something you want to take a look at. So this cloud offers some of the lowest prices in the market. And they're able to provide minute level billing increments. So in other words, they're able to build down to the minute of use, which is kind of cool because you're not rounding up to the to the next hour. <laughs> so which a lot of which a lot of cloud providers do. So if you're using 10 minutes, you're still paying for 60 minutes and it provides better cost efficiency in doing that. Uh, so they uh, offer rich features, snapshots, security groups, pre-configured images, fast AI, PyTorch, you know, is a common framework here. And ultimately, anything that exists in an ecosystem to help you develop, deploy, and operate AI systems. They provide API access uh, with public APIs available for broader integration. Uh, so in essence, we have three solutions that are, look like they're unique and uh uh, have their own approaches uh, to providing GPUs as a service. And so you need to consider those, but they're able to get you to where you need to be in building and deploying AI resources and doing so on the cheap, which many enterprises are interested in right now because they're looking at the bill for some building some of these LLMs that they're looking to build. And it's many, many millions of dollars just to train these things. And so how do you do this thing when you have a budget? This is how you do when you have the budget. You have to be creative uh, use lesser known uh, public cloud providers, GPU cloud providers, and here's three examples. So let's kind of look at the cost comparison of these three for AI workloads on equivalent basis. Um, and again, your needs are going to be unique. How you're going to use these technologies are going to be unique. Uh, you're going to find different values based on how you're using these clouds. And so it's it's not this general one size fits all thing where uh, I can define something that's going to be a generalized um, AI workload using GPUs, and that's going to be applicable to everything, including yourself. So you have to consider your particular use case, your particular uh, uh, case study, your particular application you're looking to build, and look at the patterns and how it applies on each of these cloud providers, and certainly how much it's going to cost. And these cloud providers will help you figure that out. So Vast AI, again, they utilize a marketplace model where the price is determined by demand and supply, which is kind of cool. So in other words, uh, it's dynamic pricing out there based on their ability to get access to these resources. Um, example pricing rates uh, by popular you know, GPUs like NVIDIA, RTX, uh, 
Uh, 3090 can start as low as uh, 40 cents per hour, depending on availability and competition on the platform, which, as you know, is pretty good, you know, based on other people's and other cloud providers providing uh, similar GPU processing. Lambda GPU Cloud, they use fixed pricing for specific GPU instances. Um, they start around a buck twenty-five per hour, significantly more expensive. But again, it's going to be using a resource that you know, where uh, the previous provider is selling other people's resources, repurposing them, which I think is uh, is a unique idea, and a time has come to do stuff like that. Uh, so these things are going to be a bit more expensive, but you're using a GPU that's running in their data center, and again, that's a buck twenty-five per hour. But you're going to get an RTX six thousand GPU. And it includes pre-installed AI frameworks, um, basically the ecosystem to build and deploy these systems. So if you're kind of new to AI, you're not that price, price sensitive, this may be a better option for you, just for the fact that everything is gonna be a bit more turnkey and it's gonna be a more traditional cloud where you're using uh, servers that they own. Genesis provide a, a transparent per minute pricing with a focus on cost effectiveness. Uh, the rates are typically lower than those of the larger cloud providers such as AWS, Microsoft, and Google. And they provide hourly rates, which start around 50 cents per hour for an NVIDIA V100 GPU. So notice we're, we're paying different prices for different uh, GPU brands and types. And you gotta remember that that whole market is going to change in a great way over the next few years. And you don't necessarily have to use an NVIDIA GPU. Other processors will make GPUs. And also, uh, again, we talked about this on the show before, GPUs aren't mandatory. You can use CPUs in many instances, um, but obviously if you're building you know, a big, you know, power-hungry LLM, you know, GPUs are gonna be a better option because it's gonna provide you with better performance because of the parallel processing capabilities of those systems. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. You have to look at your particular use case and how it's gonna fit in. And number one, whether or not you should use a GPU or not. Um, and if you've decided that a GPU is the way to go, what particular GPU you're going to run, uh, you know, what uh, brand, NVIDIA or something else, and what processor version. We just listed a bunch of them with different uh, price points. And then allocate or basically uh, figure out which ones are going to provide the best bang for the buck based on your particular use case. So I know what a lot of you are thinking. How do they compare with the bigger guys, AWS, Google, Platform? Cloud Platform and uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, well, uh, with smaller providers, they offer more affordable pricing uh, through the pay-as-you-go model. They're able to bill in more granular ways. So there are, the smaller providers are almost always going to be cheaper because they have to be. There has to be a compelling reason to use a smaller provider, which is going to be less known, have fewer points of presence, uh, and not necessarily have a long-standing uh, reputation in the industry. Larger providers, more expensive, but they offer economies to scale, potential discounts for long-term usage. And also, they provide a much wider range of services. So instead of just focusing on the AI development, deployment, and operations, which the smaller providers do, uh, they're going to be able to provide you with complete suite of tools and technologies, You know, hundreds of different databases, hundreds of different storage systems, hundreds of different security models. All these things are going to be available within a larger cloud provider. So you have a much wider range of choices on those particular cloud providers. And they're going to provide integration into those GPU-based uh, services that they're able to provide. So in other words, you're going to pay a premium for the GPUs on a, on a uh, more popular cloud provider, Amazon, Microsoft, or Google. But you're going to get more options, a wider range of flexibility for that price. So it depends on what you're doing. Sometimes you may need those other services, storage systems, databases, things like that. In many cases, you don't. If you don't, and you don't think you're going to need those in the future, then utilizing these smaller uh, GPU providers are perfectly fine, and they're going to save you some money. So flexibility and features. Small providers focus on GPU-centric needs, often come in pre-configured with popular framework, AI frameworks, um, but they're focused specifically on AI. They're not focused on other kinds of applications. So, And also, they're focused on a particular type of AI application, typically large-scale generative AI systems and deep learning systems where GPUs are going to be needed. So they understand the needs of their customers, and they're focused on providing those particular features. Again, not a wide, range of, wide array of services like their uh, 
larger counterparts provide. Of course, larger providers provide a broader array of services, integration options, everything we just mentioned. Thousands of cloud services, thousands of partner services exist on the public cloud providers, and that's why people leverage them, because we're able to leverage resources on demand, which is a good thing, but we're also able to get to any number of services, probably more services than we could probably install uh, on premises anymore, and use those services as needed. Scalability. Uh, the smaller folks will do a good job in scalability. They offer similar options that allow users to adjust resources as needed to project demands, but you're paying more, just like you do with the big providers. However, you know, larger providers provide scalability as well, but they're going to charge you more for that capability. You have to remember there's also hidden, you know, uh, people call them junk fees associated with some of the larger providers, network usage, data ingress and egress fees. You have to kind of look at how they're charging that. So many people have gotten, you know, many hundreds of thousands of dollars of cloud bills surprised uh, as a surprise because they didn't understand how their cloud providers were billing them. So understand both small and large, how they're billing. Normally the smaller providers are going to provide more uh, cost advantages to the customers. In other words, they're not going to nickel and dime you. They're just going to charge you for utilization of the service because they want to keep you as a customer. They know that you have a bigger cloud provider as an option and you could change those providers. So smaller providers, they focus on user-friendly interfaces, tailored AI workloads. Typically, you can get somebody on the phone. You have a sales rep that you're talking to. You have an engineer that's that's uh, assigned to you. You get more personalized service. Um, where larger providers are going to provide an 800 number unless you're paying for extensive support. Uh, and you know, um, and sometimes they're going to have a partner organization do it, things like that. So the smaller providers are typically going to be more user-friendly, uh, more personal service, and again, generally speaking. There, I'm, I'm sure there's instances where the larger providers are able to provide those sorts of things. And sustainability, if that's important to you. Smaller providers emphasize sustainable practices. Many of them, as we saw, use renewable energy. We're reusing you know, other people's GPUs, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, larger providers, they also focus on sustainability initiatives, um, and but you know, probably not to the degree of the smaller providers. But again, uh, if that's important to you, you know, take a look at where their power is coming from, things like that. They're happy to share that with you. Everybody is for sustainability. None of these providers are going to say, you know, we're not working in a sustainable way. Everybody's going to have sustainable solutions. But you have to figure out what's reality versus, uh, you know, what is in their press releases. So small providers offer you know better suited cost effective you know ai focused technologies that are going to fit uh, a lot of enterprises out there better than some of the larger providers now of course we're going to be by default leveraging a multi-cloud solution if you already have an existing provider there and you're leveraging a smaller micro cloud which is what these are uh, for your ai solutions uh, so you are going to be in charge of integrating these systems it's going to uh, have more complexity associated with it, more operational challenges. Uh, you're going to have to have different skill sets around to maintain the different environments. And that's going to be a trade-off and should be considered in the value proposition of leveraging a smaller GPU provider over the larger players out there. But I think it's something that you need to consider. I think that this uh, you know, immediate knee-jerk reaction to leveraging a brand name cloud uh, for your GPU services, especially considering how expensive they are, on the larger uh, cloud providers, uh, it's worth taking a look at the smaller, more tact, the smaller, less expensive and tactical players. And again, we we listed three because of time. There are dozens out there, uh, and many that are more popular than the ones I just mentioned. What I did here was basically looked looked at the ones that provided the best cost advantages, uh, with not considering anything else. But there's larger GPU clouds out there, well known that are able to provide very similar service services. And if you're more comfortable using them, certainly take a look at them and look at what they charge. Almost all of them are gonna charge less than the big cloud providers because they have to. Uh, <laughs> if they're not gonna compete and people aren't gonna use their systems if they're gonna be more expensive. But different degrees of service, different degrees of, uh, of scalability, uh, different flexibility options, different user interfaces, you know, different interfaces with the human beings within the company, all that stuff needs to be considered to come up with the, you know, ultimate uh, AI solution uh, that it's going to be cloud-based. Uh, and by the way, cloud-based is not the only way to do it. You can certainly do it on-prem, and that's going to be an option as well, but that's another show. 
Well, that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, you know follow my colleagues here at Silicon Angle as well as the Cube Research, and let us know what you want to talk about in terms of AI. I'm happy to address it. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers. <laughs>